Hey there, guys and gals. It is time once again for Comic Stravaganza Live. Hello. And uh, we're here with pretty boy Daniel Shoemake. What's up, guys? And uh, I am the artist also known in certain circles as the Diddy Cool Johnny Bellaraca. But tonight, you can call me Johnny. My name's John Pika. And um, we are here with Comic Stravaganza Live from the Houdini Room at the Casa de Cool. And uh, as you notice, tonight is just me and Daniel. Kind of lonely. It's kind of depressing. Yeah, it's just a guy's night out. For, for now. Yeah, maybe. Yes, yes. So you never know who might drop. We're like Mr. Rogers. You never know who's going to drop by. So tonight we're not going to have a weekly rundown because Amy Sulam is performing at Zany's that tonight. That girl. Everyone's played that room and now everyone and Amy. Has. Yeah, well, I haven't played that room well, yet. It's still on my yeah. bucket list. Um, oh, I forgot to introduce our other co-host. This is Diva Dog. Little Chi Chi Dog Diva. Diva, give me a kiss. Mm, good girl. Good girl. And uh, she loved it so much being on camera last week. She asked to come back. So uh, here she is. And um, she's going to be hanging out with us. Also out this week is Sully. Sully is out. He's out in Phoenix. Yeah. Doing some stuff for his gig for the addiction campuses thing. Yeah. Which I'm extreme. Go Sully. Get, yeah. Do what you're doing. You're doing a good job, bud. So we, you know, I mentioned it last week. We're, we're, we're spreading out, planting seeds all over the place. Trying to. And, you know, Amy's at Zany's, the premier comedy club in Nashville. I'm, I'm super stoked about that. I am too. I'm super this, happy for her. That's, that she, when she told all of us, I was like, that's, if it wasn't on a Wednesday. Well, and I'm kind of mad that she waited until today to tell me. You know, she told us back, back a month or two ago. Well, see. And you just weren't paying attention. Well, that's probably like that. true, but do you have any idea how much information goes through this brain? Not just my own ideas, because I, you know, I have like a million good ideas a minute. But then, all of the other stuff that's going on, the yeah. promotional stuff, the live shows, all of the press releases I'm doing, pimping this show, the other stuff that, you know, we're doing. Things go in his ear, and when they go back out, they take everything else with it. Sometimes. Sometimes that happens. Like, where did I so, put my um, keys? So, Amy, <laughs> from now on, you got... you. First of all, I, w I should have done a press release. Yeah. Because we could have promoted your appearance tonight on Graphic Policy. Mm -hmm. They would have pimped it out. Brent does a great job for us. Thank you, Brent. Yeah, and uh, that would have been awesome. Um, also out tonight is Dee and Nancy. Yeah. Dee's had a migraine. Dee's not feeling too hot. And I said to her, listen, Dee, it's more important for you to get healthy for uh, River City Comic yeah. Expo this weekend. And so... Take the night off, get well, feel better. They're still going to film their segment later on this week. Uh, they're going to do a, a thing about uh, Dragon Con again. About Dragon Con and really con survival tips in general. Yeah. Dragon Con survival tips for cosplayers. Because it's one of those things, if you go in just, hey, I made this really cool costume of whatever. Then you just kind of show up and you're like... I don't know what else I need to do now because you've got people taking pictures. You can't get away. If people get really creepy and really annoying at times, yeah, you, yeah, you need to listen. It's, yeah, it, yeah. It's pretty bad. So, uh, and then Darth Lee, Leanna Player, she's not here tonight because her son, tons of fun, yeah. all of a sudden started throwing up at church. So, yeah. So, you know. No worries. Go take care of everybody having health issues. So, me, me and Daniel are holding down the fort. And uh, you know what? It's gonna be a great show because fun. we're we're cool. To, we're yeah, cool guys. We're entertaining. Yeah, yeah, we are entertaining. Well, I'm entertaining. Here we go again. Channeling uh, Amy Sulam. Ah, <laughs> we love you, Amy. See, I'm not gonna be as mean to you. But you're as better Amy. looking. Well, I'm entertaining, but you're better looking. Uh, I'll, I'll take that. Okay. That? Okay. okay. Whatever. Um, so we mentioned River City Comic Expo. That's coming up this Saturday, the 29th. So if you're going to be in uh, Little Rock, come by our booth. I'm going to be there. Dee and Nancy are going to be there with Cosplay Collective. We, we're going to be side by side. Um, Pro Se Press, my publisher of Tales from the Flip Side, is going to be there. And we've got our fingers crossed that they're going to have product, physical product for sale at the booth. Now, last week I announced that it was on sale at Amazon. Mm -hmm. and, and sales have been going... Great. I still haven't gotten my author copies yet. 
you know, the publishers send you, you yeah. copies for you to inter, you know, autograph and send out to friends and fans. I haven't gotten mine yet, but my my day job boss walked up to me today and said, "I got your book in the mail yesterday." I'm like, "Oh, awesome!" Friends and fans, yeah, yet. but I haven't seen it yet. Amazon's a lot quicker on their on it right now. Well, it's okay. I, I, He's I, gonna get stuff, and it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna get my author copies, yeah. but you know, I. I've been torn. I've been like, maybe I ought to just order one from Amazon. Don't, Go ahead and pay the retail price. Don't be that guy. Well, don't be that guy. Well, because I'm impatient. Well, see, no, just relax. You, I am, you I put am, how much time into this? About 10 years work total. All right, then. Yeah. So how about you just wait a couple of days? I'm, I'm going to. I'm just there. saying, you know, I, I'm, I, I didn't, but I was torn. I was like, oh, I really want to have it in my hand. I can't wait till. River City, I don't want to order it. But. Yeah, it, it's a two sleeps. You, well, you're right. At this point, you're right. You're right. And I'm I'm super excited. Um, I'm excited for you. Tommy Hancock and Pro State Press have done a great job on on the cover, on the layout. Um, they are a dream to work with. If you're an author out there and you do sci-fi, speculative fiction, pulp fantasy, connect with them. And uh, th they might be interested in what I'm making. No promises. I'm not saying that you're the next, you know, Michael Crichton. But listen, if you got something that you think is worth seeing, contact them because they're taking submissions and they're always looking for stuff. You never know. Um, I know they are taking submissions for the next volume of my book. Should I just go ahead and send them what I sent you? Um, and just work on I it. told you to do that. I know you told me to do I that. told you to do that. I know. I've already told them that you're going to be sending it. Okay, I'll do that yeah. this week. Then. So anyway. Now that I know where it's at. <laughs> um, so then Dragon Con is is two weeks from mm -hmm. now, uh, Labor Day weekend, and uh, yeah, Leanna's Blood Drive, Blood Drive Blood yes. for Team Lisa. That's at the uh, 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 Madison, no, Inglewood. Inglewood VA? Or no. American, American Legion, Legion Post. American Legion Post. 82. Yeah. So um, if you're in the Nashville area, if you're not going to Dragon Con. I don't know where I'm going yet. No, you don't. <laughs> I don't know where come I'm come down yet. to the uh, Blood Drive and, uh, you know, support that. Um, a lot of my friends and family are going to Dragon Con. It's, you know what? It's always on a bad weekend for me. Yeah. When you got family, when you got kids late and who aren't necessarily into what you're into, you know, Labor Day weekend for a con is, is tough. Yeah, it is tough. It's tough. So, you know, hey, Dragon Con, if you want Johnny to come, book me. That's all you got to do. But uh, for me to take time off from family, yeah, that's kinda it's, it's kind of rough. So, but luckily, D and Nancy are going. You might be that's going. That's possible. It depends on how the rest of this week goes. So we've, we've got correspondents that are going to be there covering the con. I just can't be there in person. Yeah. But... Um, and then uh, the Jackson, Tennessee Comic Expo, September 12th. Um, I'm going to be in Tullahoma with Tina Vita yep. at uh, the South Jackson Civic Center doing Swinging at the Roxy. And um, gosh, they're super excited to have us. Are they really? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're, Is this that same theater you sent me pictures of that was just utterly fantastic? Like a cool old school? Maybe. Like just five or eight chairs wide and just deep? No, 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 no. That's the, the palace up in Galilee. That's what it was, yeah. Um, this place is, um, it used to be a school, mm -hmm. and it's been converted into a theater and visual arts center. And, um, you know, the theater has rake seating, sure, yeah. and, and it's beautiful. It's, it's great. It's a great old theater. It's probably haunted. That's even better. Yeah, so we're going to have like a great time. And you can find out more about that at roxymusical.com. Um, and while I'm promoting my stuff, the book, Tales from the Flip Side, you can find out more about that at uh, prosepress.com or at flipsidetales.com. Yep. See what I did there? See? Yeah. So uh, anyway, we got some stuff to cover. We got some questions from the congregation yes, tonight. Yes, we do. And, uh, you know, I probably ought to have Twitter up here, too, because my hell. our good friend, Tim Randalls, our production assistant. A.K.A. Jarvis. Yeah, that's what he he's been, yeah, that's what he's been calling himself. Is uh, going to be communicating with us via Twitter, maybe. Am, am I even connecting here on Twitter? The it's, last it's loading. It is still loading. It's loading. Ah, oh, jeez. 
That's so good. You're going to force me to get Twitter right now, aren't you? Yeah, why don't you go ahead I'm going to sign on on Twitter. Hey, Tim, send us a tweet at livecomics.com just so that we know that you're there. And while he's doing that, um, I want to just, uh, oh, hey, we just got one. Got something. 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 What did, what did we get? Oh, it's a retweet for the Diesel Powered Podcast. Hey, hey, who did we get that from? Comics tweets, but see, that's, Sweet. that's, I'm just, I follow my own Twitter feed oh. for Diesel Powered Podcast, so. Okay. Yeah, that's not from Tim. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I my follow myself. Up. He cut. Oh, Jarvis is here. There he hey, is. Hey, there's Jarvis. There he is. All right, so uh, we'll be monitoring the Twitter as we go along, and you guys interact with us, send us your questions if you're part of our congregation. So we got some questions from the congregation. Yep. Um, Nathan Fillion. Yes. He's Captain great. Mao. And uh, what's the show he does now? Is it was it, um, uh, Bones. It was Bones? No, no, no Bones. that was... That was, uh, that was Angel. David, yeah, Angel. He did... Uh, 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 I watched it. You're gonna, it's going to kill me. He's an author and she's a detective. Uh, what is the name of the show? Jarvis, Wait, I help thought us that out. was Bones. Wait, uh, what am I thinking of? I don't know. What What are we thinking of? Maybe it was, but no, because we're Bones. thinking about the David Borgnes yeah. series. Oh, come on, Tim. Help us out here. Jarvis, we need you. Come anyway, on. Anyway, we'll monitor. Yeah. Anyway, Nathan Fillion said he wants to play Booster Gold. Do you? Are you familiar with Booster Gold? No, I'm not. So in the uh, DC Universe, Booster Gold is from uh, the, the far future. Uh, I want to say the, the 31st century, maybe. Um, and he doesn't really have any superpowers. He wears a super suit. He has a suit that gives him superpowers. Honey, where's my super suit? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, he he does heroic deeds for fame and cash. Did you ever see the movie Mystery Men? Yes. Captain I'm, Amazing. Okay. Booster Gold is Captain Amazing. Got you. Yeah. So uh, and and he in the DC universe he comes back to the present and joins the Justice League and you know um, so anyway. He wants to play Booster Gold. I don't know where he would play that character. Maybe Legends of Tomorrow? Yeah. I, I don't see it fitting in with, well, maybe The Flash or Supergirl because he is he was introduced in Action Comics as a Superman character. I, you know, we'll have to Castle. see. Castle. There we go. Castle. Yeah. Bones and Castle. I always get those confused. There we go. Yeah. Because they look the same, don't they? Yes, they do look the exact same. Yeah, yeah, they do. But Castle is a lot more entertaining, personally, just because Phil and Nathan Fillion Utterly hilarious. I, I, I like, like I like them both. I like them yeah. both. Um, but here, here's what he said in this article. He said if he doesn't get to do Booster Gold, he wants to reboot the greatest American hero. What do we think about that? Yeah, I go straight to Indiana Jones on that one. Wait, huh? Well, greatest American. I don't know greatest American hero. Sorry. You I'm, what, dude? I'm telling you, I don't know these things. I'm sorry. Look at what's happening to me. I can't believe it myself. Come on, you don't know that? Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I know that. Okay, in the 80s, Stephen J. Cannell, who, like, did every TV show on TV in the 80s, <laughs> did... Oh, we got a special guest coming in the... <laughs> In the studio. Look at well, like who I it said, is. Mr. Rogers shows up. It is Tina, Tina Vita. Vita. Dude, this dog doesn't like me. No, she does too. Give her a kiss. Uh, I Diva. don't give kisses. What? Oh. 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 This is the episode. <laughs> Diva freaks out. No, you don't need to hold her I yet. Don't hold her. Let, let her. Let her. Let her settle down. Let her get used to you. Have a seat, Tina Vita. Hello. Lovely to see you, darling. Lovely to see you, Diva. Give me a kiss. Good yeah. girl. Good girl. Anyway, Greatest American Hero in the 80s. Did you ever watch Greatest American Hero? Um, uh, she didn't either. <laughs> All right, we're going to let her go upstairs. There we go. All right, bye-bye, Diva. She was good until you showed up. She gets, there can only be one female. Well, she, she does get area jealous area of now. other females. Uh, that's what I was saying. Yeah, 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 especially, especially good-looking ones. I'm not saying you're good looking, but, you know. I'll say that. It's okay. <laughs> anyway. 
Greatest American Hero. Did you ever watch it? You ever no. seen it? So, okay. In the 80s, Stephen J. Cannell, who did like everything, he did Riptide, he did Hardcastle and McCormick, he did uh, The A Team. Okay. Hello. He did a series called The Greatest American Hero about this school teacher, high school, te school teacher named Ralph, who um, is hand chosen by an alien race to be Earth's protector. And he's given a super suit, and the suit is what has the power. I think he just wants to play someone that's in a super suit. Maybe, maybe. But 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 here's the thing. Ralph doesn't know how to control the suit. <laughs> oh, that sounds even better. Because they gave him the suit, but he lost, he he lost the, the instructions. Manual? Yeah, he <laughs> lost the user manual. So he's trying to figure it out. And um, Maxwell is an FBI agent who knows his secret and, like, forces Ralph to go on these secret heroic FBI missions. Who was that that played uh, Maxwell, Jonathan? Do you remember? This is Jonathan Hayes. Um, not Robert Stack, but... Um, to the oh. Google. We'll, we'll, I'll remember this William in a William Catt played Ralph. William Catt played Ralph. And then Maxwell was pay, played by um, somebody else. And was Pam Dauber the... Uh, Romantic lead to Ralph? I'm Am I remember sure. that right? Anyway, I, I should know. I just watched the entire on. series on DVD like, like Robert six Culp? months ago. Robert Culp. Robert Culp. Thank you very much, Robert Culp. He was awesome. Anyway, Nathan Fillion wants to reboot The Greatest American Hero. You know Nathan Fillion, right? Captain Mal from Firefly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Could, could you see him as a bungling wannabe superhero? Abducted by aliens and given a super suit? Possibly. 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 I'm not sure. I think he'd be good at it just because he plays the bungling kind of goof, like lovable yeah. goofball very well. Does he? Very well. I mean, come on, Firefly? He wasn't a bungling goofball. He was I a goofball. Was. No. Whatever. No. He, no, no, no. The thing with Firefly <laughs> was that he always let his heart override his head. And so he did some boneheaded stuff because his heart was so big. Always to the benefit of other people. When he should have been thinking of himself first, he put other people in front of himself. Well, he was the... Anyway. That's not bungling. That's not a goofball. That's, that's oh, he, he was, was a goofball. A goofball. <sighs> he was a goofball. He may have put other people first in front of him, but there are instances in there you're like, what are you? That's just goofy. All right, that's fans fun. watching us right now, you can tweet us live at live comics do you agree or disagree that captain mal is a goofball connie selica was the chick. connie selica connie selica and i think i've got a picture of her. i had a crush cute. on connie selica because uh yeah she was she was smoking hot i love connie selica what did she do after greatest american hero oh she was married to john tesh what yeah, yeah. okay there Who's John it? Tesh? What? I don't pay attention to Entertainment the Tonight? Jazz composer, pianist? She was in a Bill Pullman thing with called Hotel, it looked like. Anyway. Whatever. I love Connie Selica. Uh, Connie Selica was married to Gil Gerard. Before John Tesh. Okay. <laughs> now Gil Gerard, there's a name from the past. That was Buck Rogers. And, uh, oh gosh, yeah. no, not the terrible Queen, 80s Queen thing, was it? What? What? The Queen, no, I'm thinking Flash Gordon, never mind. No, what? Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers was a TV show yeah, starring I Aaron to, Gray yeah. and Gil Gerard. I went to the bad Flash and, Gordon and, movie, and um, <laughs> uh, uh, What's his name is Twiggy. Twiggy. Um, Felix. Felix, Felix, yeah, Felix, um, um, Felix... Felix Silva. Fe Felix Silva. That's right. Felix Silva. Hurry, Buck. Yeah, that was a voice great by show. Mel Blanc. That's that right. Mel Blanc. It yeah. was voiced by Mel Blanc. And um, wow, thank you, Jonathan, for being a uh, veritable cornucopia of useless trivia. Um, anyway, uh, so what do you think? Nathan Fillion, Greatest American Hero, oh, yeah. or Booster Gold? Or neither one. Let us know. Or both. At, at Live Comics or post on our Facebook page. 
and let us know what you think. Uh, some things were revealed about The Flash Season 2. We already mentioned it uh, last week that Jay Garrick, the Jay Garrick Flash, is going to be uh, part of the cast. Uh, also, we know now that Wally West and Dr. Zoom is coming back, the reverse Flash. So he's not really gone or really dead. That's what happens when you got time travel. Yeah. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. But it picks up six months later. And apparently things are not what they seem. Now, I was asked by our congregation if we had any predictions on the storylines or how we thought season two might go. And I, I got no idea. I got nothing. Yeah. I mean... The, the first season was really good. It was really strong. It ended on a cliffhanger. What do you think, babe? I have no idea what you're talking about right now. <laughs> the Flash TV show? I don't watch it. <laughs> you should watch it. You'd like it. It's good. I have my art to do. I'm sorry. Your art? My art. What art? Um, I, made, I do things out of Sculpty. I made Yoshi a while back. Why, why have I never seen this before? Because you've never asked. <gasps> no, see, okay, you guys need to take a lesson from the master self-promoter. You gotta tell people what you're into, what you're up to, and what you're good at. I love to do it in the quiet. I don't feel like doing commission work. I do it for <laughs> me, not for you, Johnny. You've got dog hair all yes, I wonder do. why. She <laughs> Keep doing that. <laughs> Um, hey, oh, wow. Wow. hey, you know we have rehearsal tomorrow night, right? Yeah. What, what is that? Are you sure? No, for tomorrow. sure. For sure. We have to do it tomorrow. Something's going to happen. No, no, no. September 12th is right around the corner. I, I told everybody in my life, nothing else happens on Thursday from this point out. So... Um, we shall see. I have no predictions about Flash. Trip. I got nothing. I I just don't. All all I know is we're gonna see more of Gorilla Go Gorilla Grodd, mm -hmm. and that I'm super excited about. We know that Wally West is Kid Flash, so there's a possibility we may see Kid Flash in season two. Cool. Um, but really, that's about it. Cool. Now this is kind of interesting. Yeah, I read this earlier, and I was like, ooh. I don't know how about all this. Where are we at? This? Right here. Okay. In Captain America Civil War, mm -hmm. which is coming up next summer, Jeremy Renner, who plays Hawkeye, has confirmed that he is on Captain America's side. Now, that was kind of obvious. We've heard that rumor mm -hmm. before. We've seen some posters are leaked that he's on Captain America's side. Well, he confirmed it for sure. Um, but it's rumored that the Black Widow might be on Iron Man's side. Which, uh, if she's a double agent, makes sense. But, but from a from a strict storyline standpoint, the relationship she has with Steve Rogers versus the relationship she has with Tony Stark makes no sense. No. Unless she's a double agent. It's it, well, Or it may not be a double agent thing. She may be playing both sides to her benefit. It could be, but you know what? I think we saw a little bit of her, a uh, little bit more of her altruistic nature yeah, in the last couple kind of, of movies. It is getting brought out, especially with Winter Soldier, with her and uh, uh, Captain America's interaction with the whole going and end up finding Zola and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then with the relationship that her and the Hulk had. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Because it's... as long, it, And with, with Hawkeye, her oldest friend... Yeah. Being on the side of Captain America, why would she split away from two close, close friends for someone who is really just a casual ally? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Do you know that every time you're on the show, our ratings go up? I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> well, so, Tim was saying earlier that he would be on Tony Stark's side. I don't know how I... Because it's if it's going strictly by Civil War... Everybody already knew that Tony was Iron Man. Yeah. All right. So him coming out, the only thing, like when he came out and said, yes, I'm Iron Man in the book, the only thing that he added to was I'm an alcoholic. Well, <laughs> that's right. Well, and I mean, it's there in the movie. It's there in the movie. I mean, yeah, that's in the movie too. But then... I'm, I'm surprised just, they never did the demon in a bottle storyline. That like would be that. really good. I would yeah. really love that. What are you talking about? In the comics, in the 80s... 
There was a storyline where Tony Stark lost his fight with alcoholism and was so drunk and became destitute, lost Stark, Interna lost Stark International, lost the Iron Man suit, lost, everything. lost everything, destitute okay. on the street. And the whole story is about how he controlled that demon in a bottle to become Iron Man again. Okay. Great okay. story. Um, yeah, so he, here's the deal. In the movie version, the, they're not requiring people to reveal their secret identities in as much as they are requiring them to all be registered and to um, abide by the accords that come out of Avengers 2 with the, the city dropping and all that and these unregistered, unknown, un, um, undocumented no, superpowered I'm out. people. I'm, I'm on cap side. Yeah. I'm out. No. Yeah. I, I'm on cap side too. Because it's one of those things where if you register, then so if you make someone mad by not doing an appearance at some kid's birthday, that person who can complain to another person and go on and on and on, they know, and you know, it's just... It, well, and Tony Stark's argument is that it's the same as someone owning a gun, having a loaded gun, that these superpowered people are dangerous. Of course, it's easy for him to say, because yeah. he doesn't have any powers. Yeah, he he created everything. Yeah, yeah. So but it's, it's, you, it's like, it's... To me, it's like asking someone to register themselves because they are, because they're gay. Yeah, that's exactly that's what the it best is. way. That's, that's the that's best way to describe it because you're asking someone to say, "I am this way" in a paper document. If they don't want to tell everybody, it's not your place to tell them. Yeah, it's not your. If you're asking someone to register themselves because of who they are, that intrinsically, whether we're going with. America or not, that's just not the way it is. Well, think Invasion about this for France. Captain America. Yeah. For Captain America, who was born and created during World War II, it's akin to, for him mm -hmm. to the Nazis requiring the Jews to be tattooed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And being registered. That's talent right there. That magic <laughs> stuff can happen anytime. Um, so yeah, I'm on Team Cat. Hey, so we way. just got asked this question. Will we see Bruce Banner in this movie? And I, I think we will. Um, I think it'll be toward the end. It might be one of those, like, one of them will have him as a wild card. Well, play that. we know Thunderbolt Ross is in the movie. Yeah. We know that he is, is going to be on Iron Man's team. If nothing else, I think that post credit scene in the Incredible Hulk movie is actually... Out of out of continuity, and is takes place like after Avengers two. Wait, which one? The when when Thunderbolt Ross is at the bar. Oh yeah, and Tony yeah. Comes Tony's in, talking to him, and he says, after we're, we're, "We're putting together a team," and yeah. he just yeah makes this look. I, I don't. I, I think that happens out of continuity, and maybe it happens between Avengers two and Civil War. I don't know, but I, I think what's going to happen is we're going to see. Thunderbolt Ross, mm -hmm. like the comics, become the second Hulk, the Red Hulk. Yeah. And I'd love to see a battle oh, between be the two Hulks. And it would be interesting to see Banner and Stark split. Because although they are on the same plane mm -hmm. intellectually, so, fundamentally, like morally, yeah. they seem to be on different they're oh, on two yeah, different series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two, two different areas there. So that, that will be interesting. So will we see him? Probably. In what role? I don't know yet. Uh, Spectre star Leah Sidhu is set to play the female lead in Gambit as Belladonna Bordeaux. Well, see, this is... Boudreaux. The, Boudreaux. Belladonna Boudreaux. Yeah, Boudreaux. Fans are loving this casting. I'm not familiar with her as an I'm, actor. I'm so about you? to look at her real quick. That's Hang who on. you need to talk to. He's... All about the stars and the actors and stuff. Who? Him? Pretty boy over there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, wait a minute. Hang on. What is this chick done? She was Okay, in she was... No. Ow! She was what in James heck? Bond, the, the new yeah, James she's Bond in Spectre. Jay okay, now I know. Well, she's also in the Mission Impossible, the fourth movie. She was one of the girls in that. And, well, okay, now I know who we're talking about. That could work. That but could really work because she plays that dark thing really, really well. The dark brooding thing because Bella Bordeaux is, that's a bad picture, is um, 
She is his childhood friend. She was. They Tim, were I told you, Twitter. Point. It takes too long. Bella Boudreau and Gambit were married at one time. What? Oh, did I get a spot on my neck? <laughs> Jerk. Oh, wow. You must have hit him hard. <laughs> yeah, you got a welt right there. Kind of looks like. No! Give me. Oh, I'm going to get shot again. Uh, anyway. Yes. But because in the comic books, and depending on what. Gambit they, Gambit they use here. He was married to Bella Boudreaux for a time. And then he left, and then come to find out that him and Ro, blah, 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 whatever, a whole lot of other stuff happened. So, take that. So, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where She's cute. it depends on she ain't as how cute it goes. As you. Depends on how, what it is. We'll see. I'm open to it. Well, you guys let us know, fans. I've not, you know, I've seen um, Ghost Protocol, Mission Impossible 4. I don't remember her in it. Hang on. Um, but uh, I remember that was a good movie, though. Yeah. I liked it a lot. And, uh, I could have seen it. Have you seen it? I could have. I didn't. Well, it's not too late. It's on Blu-ray and DVD. The fifth Mission Isn't Impossible. Is it DVD? Yeah. Well, that's the Ghost Protocol is number four. Yeah. The fifth one is in theaters right now. Oh, oh, I already yeah. seen Ghost Protocol. Never mind. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, see, I, I just don't remember her. She has a pretty rat. <laughs> <laughs> she, I don't know. She looks like a child. That girl. She was the girl. She was the bad girl that got thrown out the window. Whee! In the fight between her and the dark headed chick. I don't remember. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll have to go back and watch it. Yeah. Anyway. I don't really have an opinion because I'm all for it. She's I'm cute. not a Gambit She's fan. She does a lot of physical acting, so whatever. And I'm not. A, I I don't know the character of Belladonna Boudreaux. I, I I never read the Gambit series. Only familiar with him from Jim Lee's X Men run. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to get back up back up and start reading his stuff too. But fans love it, and you guys let us know what you think about the casting of Leah Sadro. Sadu. Sadu. That's There's what no I said. There. Well, there is there. Well, that's throwing not, me. Seydu, or is it Seydu? That ain't. C I'm gonna go Seydu. Seydu is playing Boudreaux. Yeah, there we go. And they're both end with an X. Well, it's the French thing. And Seydu. I like Seydu. I, like I think Cidu. it's Seydu. I'm gonna go with Seydu. Oh. I'm going with Seydu. Whatever. Anyway, that's it uh, for us tonight. We'd love to hear your comments uh, and, and know what your feedback is. Give us your predictions and ask your questions for next week. You can do that at Facebook, uh, Comic Extravaganza Live on Facebook, or on the Twitter at Live Comics. That's C O M I X. Yep. X. Oh, you went in the way. <laughs> I X. I X. Focus. Well, All right, we got to thank a couple of sponsors. Will Tina ever grow up and be serious? Outlook is good, actually. Hey! hey not now. <laughs> is, Why am I always the one that gets picked on? Because we love you. Uh -huh. is, okay. is Daniel ever not going to be picked on? Probably not. Concentrate and ask again. <laughs> Concentrate. No. Is Daniel ever not going to be picked on? No. Uh -uh. My reply is no! He is forevermore the whipping boy of Comic Extravaganza and our sister Gosh. network shows. All right, so before we go, we want to thank a couple of sponsors. Comic Bento. You can get a Bento box, a mystery box of graphic novels in your mailbox. We still need month. to do that on camera. I, well, I know. The next box hasn't come yet. So All as right. soon as it does, we're, we're going to start doing that. Right. Um, and uh, no. $20 or less for an awesome box of mystery comics. Graphic novels, actually. Yeah, I think. And... Uh, Check out the link in the show notes down below. Um, Empower Sound. We use their amazing amp here on the show and on our live uh, live appearances. We'll have it with us at the River City Comic Expo in Little Rock. We want to thank Tina Vita for being here. I'm awesome, I know. And okay. you are awesome. And, and they get to see us once again in our live awesomeness as Big Daddy Cool and Mitzi Lee on September 12th at the Tullahoma South Jackson Civic Center. Mm -hmm. Swing at the Roxy, baby. 
be there. Um, and she is awesome. Awesome on live, uh, on stage. Not so much like off stage, on stage, it just goes wild. <laughs> it, it really does. You, you come alive in a way that I've never seen anyone else before. It's, it's really fantastic. I, I love working with you on stage. Um, we also want to thank Graphic Policy for hosting us. They're the best news site out there. So uh, if you're not subscribed to graphicpolicy.com, check them out. And of course, if you want to book us for your convention, your festival, or your expo, you can do that at comicstravaganzalive.com or powerhouseconventions.com. Go check it out. Contact us. We would love to come to your convention, do some uh, panels, host some celebrity Q&As. Wouldn't that be awesome if you, like, hosted, you know, a Q&A with uh, whoever it is from The Walking Dead? Ooh, I'd like that. I'd like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Norman Reedus or uh, what's the other guy's name that plays Rick? That Brandon, guy? Yeah. <laughs> that guy. 